Hey guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So I'm back with a Kaisa updated complete guide. Now, honestly, nothing too much has changed about Kaisa's build, but I felt you know we haven't really talked about Kaisa and her build in a pretty long time, and I thought this this would be a really good time to discuss how to build her again. What are her multiple last item options? As well as just go through Kaisa in general, because as I mentioned in my patch 3.4b video, Kaisa got her Q got buffed, and now it is really Kaisa is really really strong. I've played her, um, spammed her for quite a number of games in a row, and I have found that she is really really good. Now Kaisa of course does have low range, but she does bring the backline dive potential, which you guys will be able to see in the gameplay a little bit later on. That you can just dive in the backline, kill the enemy mage or marksman, and pretty much win your team the fight in that way. Of course, that is a little bit dangerous, so we'll talk a little bit more about that when we reach the gameplay section of the video. But first up, as usual with my updated complete guides, you know, if you guys um, need to know the, the skills and leveling order, refer to the original complete guide that I will put in the cards up above so as to not waste too much time and make the video too long. Anyways, let's jump straight into the build. So this is the final build for Kaisa. We do run the Rift Maker. We'll talk a little bit a little bit more about that when we get to there. But this isn't really quite what we go for right at the beginning. So first up we of course start with a long sword. But we go for a double BF sword start. Now why do we do that? Because we want to get the Q evolution on Kaisa. So you first start off with double BF sword. And this will of course build into the, the Storm Razor as well as the Infinity Edge. So after you get double BF sword, generally what I do is after I get the double BF sword, I go for my tier 1 boots. Um, the boots of speed. And then I will build into the Storm Razor. And after Storm Razor, I generally go for not that, but I generally go for the Infinity Edge. After Infinity Edge, I like to go for my boot uh, enchant. So the second tier boots together the boot enchant. For the boot enchant, you got a couple of options. You got the boots of Fear, of course, with the additional movement speed and kiting potential. You have, of course, the Merc Treads if there is a lot of CC, and in other scenarios, the plated steel caps. So getting defensive boots on Kai'Sa is really useful because Kai'Sa likes to dive into the back line so having the extra defenses will help you quite a bit. And then you get the Rune and Hurricane. This of course allows you to spread your passive onto multiple people at one uh, time. And when you reach 3 items, Kai'Sa gets really really strong. Kai'Sa has multiple power spikes of course when you first get the double BF sword and your Q evolve. When you of course get your like double, um, for, uh, double crit items at the beginning and of course when you get the Rune and Hurricane as well. So, uh, something to take notice, uh, after you get the double BF sword and the storm raising, you can actually go for Runan's Hurricane before you go for Infinity Edge, if you so prefer, but personally, I don't like to waste the BF sword, so I like to go for Runan's Hurricane after Infinity Edge. But the catch with that is that you will be delaying your uh, E of Evolution, so you only get E Evolution when you reach the third item, which in my opinion is fine because your first two item power spike is really, really strong, so not too much of an issue uh, for me. So your, for your second last item, you get the Moral Reminder for the Armor Penetration as well as the Grievous Wounds. So of course you can get the Executions Calling a little bit earlier on if you do need it. Like if there's an enemy Soraka, enemy Nami, um, that kind of thing, someone who heals a lot, then you can of course get the Executions Calling a little bit earlier on. And finally, my favorite last item option to top it all off is going to be the Rift Maker. So Rift Maker, uh, when you, it got the latest buff that gives it AT ability power, this actually allows you to evolve Kaisa's W ability, uh, which is normally what you don't really go for um, when you build Kaisa, because generally your W ability is the least important ability um, in terms of all her three evolutions and her three basic abilities. But with this, you get the health ability haste, and you also get, of course, your W evolution. So you also get the 12% Omnivam, which is really, really useful on Kaisa, uh, of course, when you get to the last item. And of course, you also get the true damage when you are 3 seconds in combat. That's also really useful. So that's my favorite last item option. But you have a lot of other life uh, last item options. Now, you have, of course, the Bloodthirster. Now, the Bloodthirster is really similar in terms of uh, it and the Rift Maker. Because Rift Maker gives 12% Omni Vamp. Bloodthirster gives 15% Physical Vamp. But the key difference here is that going for Bloodthirster gives you 100% crit. Uh, whereas Rift Maker does not. So there are certain matches where I do prefer to take Bloodthirster instead of Rift Maker, and Bloodthirster also gives you the extra shield. 
Now, another item option you can get is the Rapid Fire Cannon. Now, Rapid Fire Cannon gives you th that additional range, which is actually really useful sometimes when you are trying to hit a squishy target. So sometimes, let's say you see the enemy ADC close by, you walk up with the extra range from the Rapid Fire Cannon that auto allows you to ult straight to them and then assassinate them instantly. That's the main use of the Rapid Fire Cannon. Next up we have the Wits End. So Wits End, generally if you're gonna build it, you're probably gonna build it as like uh, earlier on in your build. This is really good against high magic damage teams. Um, if there are, there are like two or three sources of magic damage and they're fed, this is gonna be, gonna be a really good counter to them. And lastly you have the Slurry Charge Blade. Of course it gives you the attack speed, ability, haste, crit, uh, crit chance as well as of course getting that bonus uh, crit on your basic attacks, um, the magic damage crit. So. Slurry Charge Blade, really good option as well, so pretty much for your last op last item option, it's pretty much whatever you kind of prefer. And the last one that I can't actually fit in here because of the double BF sword at the start is the GA. So GA on Kai'Sa is still pretty good because Kai'Sa does dive straight into the enemy team, so sometimes getting the revive is necessary because you're diving hit first into the enemy team, really easy to just get bursted down and the revive can help you out a lot. So for the runes, there is quite a lot of debate on this because Kai'Sa can actually go for uh, Kraken Slayer, Conqueror, and Lethal Temple. And the top three Kaisa builds in Asia actually have the top build, uh, top person takes um, the Kraken Slayer, the second place person takes Lethal Temple, and the third place person takes Conqueror. So, really, all three are viable. My personal preference is the um, Lethal Temple. It's a lot better in the late game where you are in the team fights, you can, you know, get your lethal tempo fully stacked, you get insane attack speed and you can proc your passive a lot uh, on multiple targets, so I love the, the lethal tempo personally, but uh, Kraken Slayer and Conqueror still work really well as well. Domination Rune, of course the Hunter Vampirism for the life steal. don't need to explain that one too much. For the Resolve uh, Tree, I like to take Nullifying Orb personally, but Hunter Titan is also really useful if you're diving into the enemy team. Because uh, CC immunity is always going to be good. Um, you can get CC really easily when you dive in. And of course, the bone plating is really good against burst as well. And for the last I, uh, for the last rune, sorry, the inspiration rune, I like going for Hunter Genius personally because getting cooldowns up more often is going to be really, really useful. For the spells, exhaust and flash, standard stuff. Don't have to explain that too much. And with all that out of the way, we can move straight on into the gameplay. Alright, now moving on to the gameplay, so as usual, small reminder of course for you guys to of course like, comment, and subscribe. Any questions or queries, remarks, anything, just leave them in the comments below and I will be sure to address uh, them or at least give it a like. So anyways, uh, here we of course have the Kaisa gameplay. So in this particular game, I'm with a Soraka against an Ezreal and a Bran. So Ezreal and Bran is a really high poke lane, uh, Bran walks up to Ward, uh, get a free Q off on him. Of course, uh, helps a little bit with the isolated damage, so kind of poking Bran out just a little bit at the beginning. Now this lane should be relatively alright because we do have a lot of sustain whereas they have a lot of poke. Sustain lanes do really well into poke lanes. Now of course the sort of main issue here is Kai'Sa's short range. Uh, because of my short range, I'm going to put myself in a lot of danger from Ezreal Qs and Bran Ws when I'm walking up to CS. So I'm just trying to play... Um, you know, as carefully as possible, trying to avoid their poke. I'm um, doing a really good job on that so far, mainly because they haven't really been aiming for me, so not too big of an issue here. Now, Bran steps up to actually poke. I, he eats a W from me, eats an isolated Q from me, and an auto as well, so Bran is actually really low. Now, unfortunately, Soraka actually moved away to, I believe, remove the ward, so I wasn't able to quite capitalize on Bran. So if Soraka was with me, I definitely would have, like, flashed forward and, you know, tried to, to get rid of the Bran there. But unfortunately, um, that's not quite the case. So anyways, in this game, we can show off a lot of the aspects of Kai'Sa. We do see the front-to-back power of Kai'Sa as well as the backline dive potential of Kai'Sa. The whole trouble of really playing Kai'Sa is you always have the option to dive the backline as Kai'Sa with your ultimate. But the whole question is, number one, should you do it? And number two, how slash when um, do you do it? So to answer that question is... If the enemy has like a lot of like CC and a lot of uh, like catch potential uh, that they haven't actually used, you generally don't want to dive the back line. Sometimes, sometimes it's just better to play front and back with your team and just stay with your team. But sometimes if you find the opportunity to do so, like for example if they have a lot of catch potential but they blew all their CC already on the front line, 
then you can actually dive the backline and kill them all or in certain team comps that are really squishy with not a lot of CC. For example, the one I'm up against here. Um, they don't have a lot of CC and they're all pretty squishy aside from set. This is the kind of game where you can dive the backline a lot and this is the kind of game where it's really really fun to play Kai'Sa because diving backline as an ADC always is really satisfying. So Kai'Sa as I mentioned briefly in the, in the intro of the video did get buffed recently uh, on her AD and AP ratios on her Q and I really firmly strongly believe that this is going to make Kai'Sa really really good again and I already think Kai'Sa is pretty good even though she did get that nerf like way back when. I really think she's really strong at the moment I think this buff has made her even stronger so I think Kai'Sa's in a really really good spot at the moment. Alright, so here we spot a skirmish. We ju we've just pushed out the wave, so we're gonna actually rotate over to the mid lane and see if we can help out our team. We are level 5. Uh, we do hit the, the W onto Lee Sin. We're diving straight on in, trying to get the kill on Lee Sin. We do get the kill on Lee Sin. Unfortunately, we get charmed by Ari. We get the exhaust in onto the brand. Brand either just gave, gave up there and AFK, um, or he actually like had a lag or something like that. But he suddenly just stood still, gives us a free kill, baits the Ari. Uh, into trying to attack us and Ari dies as well. So overall we pick up 3 kills um, in the mid lane. Really good start to the game for us. I get 2 kills and 1 assist so really really nice. We also get a couple of uh, 2 tower plates from the mid lane which is really nice as well. And this now allows us to recall and pick up hopefully our second BF sword. Alright, there we go. Second BF Sword has been acquired, so this gives us our Q Evolution. We've also picked up the Boots. As I mentioned, I tend to go for Boots after getting my first two BF Swords. If not, uh, it'll be really long time before you get Boots, and getting the extra movement speed is really, really useful. So here we're using the Boots to run our way back into the lane. Ezreal tries to get the plant, uh, to deny the plant, but uh, ends up not really being very successful. I end up picking up the plant. Uh, and pretty much going back to almost full health with Soraka's uh, heal, I will be back to full health, so no big issue there. Bran is in our side of the uh, in our side bush, which is pretty obvious because we just saw him walk in there. Soraka tries to land some poke, but doesn't quite work out. Uh, again, can't really spot where the Bran is. Objectives are coming up in 30 seconds, of course, so we of course do want to rotate for those objectives. We don't have our summoner spells up, but we do have the ultimate, so we are kind of mostly ready to contest the objectives. Uh, Bran sort of nearly gets caught out there, but thankfully manages to escape from us. And honestly, nothing too much happening here. Uh, we are pinging to, of course, go for dragon. Mountain dragon is the most important dragon, and always should be. Um, you always should go for the mountain dragon. So here we are trying to go for the mountain dragon. Graves is in position to contest the dragon. Ari gets a ward over the wall and they do have the skull so they can see the health of this dragon. Not too much we can do about that. Even if we remove the ward, they still have the skull vision. So here Lee Sin hits the Q and comes in with the steel. So um, here I get the kill onto Ari and then I'm going to out over to kill Lee Sin as well. Then I'm going to exhaust the Ezreal so he doesn't do too much damage to me and then I'm just going to back uh, straight on off. Unfortunately, Graves does pay the price for um, this entire sequence of events. Um, but I do pick up another two more kills. So I'm 4-0-1, pretty fed, but we do lose the Mountain Dragon. So here, there is a very important lesson to be learned. Uh, and I feel that this is something that should be widely known, especially at higher elos. Um, but most people still don't know this. Um, if Lee Sin is trying to steal, he hits the Q on the Dragon. The whole team needs to stop attacking the Dragon, wait for the Q to expire, then continue doing the Dragon. Because his Q does execute damage. So if he hits the Q and we continue hitting the Dragon, when he Qs in and smites, that is really really hard to outsmite. So it actually is easier to steal the Dragon as Lee Sin than almost any other jungler except maybe, nu maybe Nunu if he flashes in to Q smite the, the Dragon. So on Lee Sin, it's incredibly easy to steal um, Dragon, so you really don't want to give him the opportunity to do that. Here I end up in a 1v1 against Ezreal. Uh, I'm really, really fat, um, but unfortunately he does have the tower on his side, so I end up nearly actually dying there. Lee Sin tries to come on in. I'm just going to pop the plan to get the health back. Warding over the wall to just to check that he's not coming in from that bush. Turns out he came in from the river and not that bush, so no issue there. So what you really need to do is you need to stop attacking the dragon, let Lee Sin's Q expire and then continue. And that way he cannot actually steal the dragon because if he hops over 
with his W or with his Flash, uh, he doesn't have as good of a, of a chance to actually steal the Dragon as compared to if he did the Q in to the Smite. So that is what I actually t uh, um, told my team on, on the chat and my team actually listened to me. So we're going to see that in the second Dragon. I'm going to show you guys an example of what you should do when Lee Sin hits his Q onto the Dragon. So here Ezreal fights himself in no man's land because he was trying to catch the Soraka, ends up giving Echo a double kill, and I do pick up the assist. Alright, so that's a really important um, lesson to learn when fighting against Lee Sin. If you guys don't know that, now you know. So you know uh, if Lee Sin is trying to steal the dragon, he should never be able to do that. Now here, Brand flashes forward, I still have the ultimate, I hit the W, flash, um, not flash, I hit the W, ult in, and Q him, uh, isolate the damage and all, and he easily just dies with the help of the Graves as well, of course. So, we don't know where Lee Sin is, uh, so I'm just backing off. She, he could be coming in um, to, you know, to kill us, but... So we don't know where he is, gonna respect that, and just gonna back off. So here, as I mentioned in the build, I'm gonna build towards the Infinity Edge. I'm not gonna build the Boots upgrade or anything like that. First, I'm gonna go for the Infinity Edge Rush. Because the two item power spike of Infinity Edge together with the Storm Razor is really really strong and I and I love getting the two item power spikes. I'm gonna go for that as soon as I can. Okay, I'm quickly clearing the mid wave because Echo is nowhere uh, near. And then I'm gonna rotate back to the top lane to pick up the farm there. Ezreal honestly could have done significant tower damage, but he was probably scared because he couldn't really see where my team was because they were in the bot side jungle he didn't know that they were there so he did the right move by not being too aggressive here I get uh, I can clear the wave pretty much instantly with Kai'Sa's um, Q. Kai'Sa when you get the evolved Q can pretty much clear the wave uh, almost instantly so here I get the Infinity Edge, 2 item Power Spike and I'm gonna go for the plated steel caps in this match because um, although Ari and Bran are two, source, two sources of magic damage, I do want to dive into this team a lot. So I do want that um, extra, like I think it's 15% damage reduction uh, from the Play of Steel Caps passive. So here, I'm just going to quickly Q to try to clear the wave again. And then I'm going to hit back up the top lane. We want to try to force the top lane tower because top lane tower is really, really low. And uh, we kind of just want to take that and, you know, just move on. So we don't have to care about top lane too much anymore after we get that tower. So here, we're trying to let Soraka bait. Uh, Soraka takes a lot of damage from Ezreal, does have a really nice dodge there, a really nice silence as well, allows me to pick up the kill onto the Ezreal, ends up becoming a successful bait. <laughs> so it did work out eventually, Lee Sin dashes back in, I exhaust him so Echo doesn't take too much damage. Then I'm ulting over um, to get the kill onto Lee Sin, I believe Echo actually picks it up. Then we're, again, Someone escapes with 1 HP under the tower, this time it's Bran, Ari comes in, but she really isn't going to be doing too much, so I'm not too afraid of her. Even if she gets a charm on me, there's no way she can burst me down instantly, so I'm not too scared of that at all. Now the dragon is going to come up again really soon, so I'm just going to back, and I think I'm going to pick up a stasis if I'm not mistaken. Yep, we do pick up the stasis for the safety of course, 6, 0, and 3 now with a relatively large shutdown. We want to avoid giving the shutdown over if possible. Now something to note is that on the enemy team side, the Lee Sin is actually really close um, to my goal. Despite being only 2, 3, and 5, he does have almost the same KP as me and he does, uh, and he is um, actually really fed. So here we're going to do the dragon again and this again, we're gonna, we see whole enemy team is here contesting. Um, when Lee Sin hits Q, we want to stop aggro. You see we stop aggro, Lee Sin jumps in uh, and you know, he can't finish off the dragon because the dragon is too high health. Allows us to finish off the Lee Sin. Here again, I'm diving the backline. This is an example of the backline dive. Here I get the kill onto the enemy backline and I end up picking up the triple. So now, two things to explain there. The first thing is what I already explained. The fact that you should stop aggro on the dragon when Lee Sin hits um, Q. Lee Sin realized that his Q is going to run out so he just dashed in anyway despite the dragon not being low enough to smite and because of that, we kill him easily and pick up the dragon. That's the first thing. The second thing is how to dive the backline as Kai'Sa. So here, as I said, in this team there isn't too much catch potential. We do have the set with the um, with the two forms of CC, but since I saw Set engaging on my team with his ultimate, means that he cannot peel for his backline. So now that he is um, in my backline, I can dive over to their backline and Bran can't really do anything to stop me. Ari can try to charm me, but that did not happen and I did kill both Bran and Ari and then I can even go for the set and pick up the triple kill. So that went really really well, of course, as, as, um, as Kai'Sa and the backline dive. So here I'm just going to pick up the farm. Uh, pick up the red buff, pick up the crux, you know, everything. Just try to get as much, as much as much farm as possible. 
At this point, I'm now at 11.5k gold. No one is even close to me. The closest, next closest person is the set with 8k gold. So I'm a good, like, 3k plus gold ahead of anybody else in the game. And I'm in a position where I can carry my team. I have my stasis up. I have my uh, three, first three crit items, which is the strongest spike for Kai'Sa. When you get that Runan's Hurricane, you get really, really strong because you do get that spread onto multiple enemy targets. Makes your team fighting really, really strong. So I am in a position to carry my team. Now, all I need to do is not do anything too reckless and just not die, basically. Now here, I spot Ari in the mid lane. I'm going to dive her in the back line and I get kicked by Lee Sin, followed up by Lee Sin. I do get the exhaust and I'm going to use Stasis to buy time for Sorata, but unfortunately, I do die there. So... As I say, I shouldn't do anything too reckless here. I thought I have a free pick on the Ari, but I didn't realize that the Lee Sin was right there. And I end up actually just uh, dying and giving over the shutdown to the Lee Sin. Now there is good and bad news about this. The good news is that Lee Sin doesn't scale very well into the late game, so it's not the worst situation in the world. The bad news, the Lee Sin is the most fed member of their team, so giving him the shutdown allows him to try to carry his team even more. If you take a look at his goal, uh, I'm now at 12k and he's now at 11k, so I'm only 1k uh, up on the Lee Sin. So Lee Sin is um, kind of really fed, and I and I did contribute a lot to that with that huge shutdown um, handed over to him. So that's not really very good. I think that's more detrimental than it is helpful. So anyways, uh, it is what it is. People all make mistakes, so uh, unfortunately, I end up giving over the shutdown like a fool. Anyways here, now we can see that uh, the enemy team is kind of trying to fight my team around the Baron area, and I'm trying to come on over. See if I can help my team out. And, and it just pretty much becomes uh, um, both teams just kind of walking around. Nothing too much is really happening. I'm um, here that the bot lane tower is at 70 HP. So really easy to just take down the bot lane tower. I'm going to let the Graves do that with like one auto attack. Unfortunately, he does not get the auto attack. Does the minions get it? No, they, the minions don't even get it. So here anyways, um, we can see the whole enemy team coming for us. So I'm just going to retreat a little bit. And here you can see Ezreal coming in. They do get uh, our bot lane tower instead. And ends up really becoming nothing much again. Both teams just hovering around and nothing really happening here. Echo in the meantime though is getting off a push in the top lane. So we are getting a little bit of a slight advantage on the map. Nothing too big though. I'm going to pick up the red buff, pick up the chickens. And yeah, really nothing too much is happening here, honestly. And I'm pretty much just going to go on a farming journey of, of um, my team's entire jungle. Not sure if the jungle's, jungle is going to get pissed off about that, but I pick up the red buff, I pick up the the uh, chickens, I pick up the wolves, and now I'm going for the grump. Uh, so basically picking up our whole jungle, um, getting myself as farmed as possible. I got the executioner's calling completed already. Next dragon is coming up in um, under a minute. We spot the Lee Sin, and we spot the enemy set and as well as well. Now here, we're going to end up in like a 4v2, so we're going to have to uh, quickly back off because we can't really fight this. Um, warding over the wall to see if they're coming for us. Turns out that they are not. Uh, Echo and Lee Sin end up in a scuffle in the mid lane. 1v1. Soraka does get the ult uh, on to try to save the Echo. And Lee Sin ends up um, getting caught by three of us in the mid lane. So this pretty much should give us a free dragon. Uh, since the enemy jungle just died. So here, um, logical move of course. We're going to rotate over to the dragon. And we see Set, nothing too much that he can do here, honestly. Ezreal's here as well. Uh, again, nothing too much they can do. Here we're just going to burst down the dragon. Set comes in with the ultimate. And actually does like a third of my HP with his uh, Haymaker. But doesn't really matter too much. I got a Soraka healing me and we did get the dragon. He does die eventually. And we are able to recall and get ourselves more items. In this case, we can get the entire Mole Reminder. So we're at, we're at almost full build. We are at four items. Um, with the enchant completed as well. So only one more item to go. In this game, I, I do of course go for the Rift Maker. As I mentioned, I do really enjoy <laughs> having the Rift Maker, uh, getting the W Evolve as well as all the you know, Omni Vamp, um, the, the true damage, all, all the jazz. So here again, just farming wherever we can. Now this uh, sequence of events is really, really strange. Now here I wanted to actually just start the Baron and force it, but Graves said to bait the Baron, which I thought wasn't really a very bad idea, because if we bait Baron and we can turn onto the enemies, 
we can pretty much just uh, get a free team fight win, either end the game off of that or get a free Baron. So here, he wanted to t just bait the Baron, but the issue is that I think the enemy team doesn't even have any vision on the Baron. So if we just start the Baron right now, I don't even think that they would notice us doing the Baron. So uh, it turns out they did face check into the Baron, but we weren't even in position to trap them. Echo goes in. I thought this was where we could go uh, for a fight. I do hit the W but I can't out in because my team isn't close by enough. If not, I would just, uh, you know, pretty much in myself to the enemy team. Now, here Lee Sin and Ezreal going to the red buff. I felt that we should have started the Baron here because Lee Sin is on the opposite side of the map. But my team again doesn't do that and ends up just walking around the Baron area doing really nothing much. So I decide not to waste any time. Since we're not doing the Baron, I'm just going to quickly go and pick up the red buff. And yeah, that's of course going to help me in the ensuing team fight. It looks like our fight's about to break out of mid lane, so I'm going to quickly rotate over to the fight in, uh, at the mid lane. Nothing ends up really happening again. So I'm, I'm a little bit impatient. I want to make something happen. I'm going to hit the W onto Lee Sin. Out over, uh, Q exhaust him. So his ult ends up doing no damage because he was exhausted. I'm trying to find a pick on the enemy jungle. He flashes out. I'm still on the chase for the Lee Sin. I end up going for the brand instead. Free auto attack to get the kill onto the brand. Ari charm goes wide. Not too much threat um, from the Ari anymore. I'm gonna get the auto uh, onto the set. Uh, bursting the set down, set is gone. Here I'm gonna get the auto onto Ezreal, Q auto, and Ezreal is just dead instantly because I do way too much damage at this point in time. Now honestly here with the entire enemy team dead and with 40 second death timers on everybody aside from Bran, I felt that we should have just gone straight for the end of the game. I was actually trying to, to type in the chat to go for the Nexus, but my team wasn't really listening. They wanted to go for the Baron. I felt this was a really big throw uh, play because this uh, Ari cannot defend against uh, a full team of 5. So this is honestly, we could have won the game right here. So I felt that we were really throwing the game by going for the Baron instead of just ending the game. Because even with the Baron, you can still possibly throw the game uh, with a huge team fight loss or something like that. So. I uh, wasn't really too happy with that, but you know, sometimes you can't really control what your team does. So instead, we end up picking up the Baron, and I end up recalling and picking up the Haunting guys. Enemy turret destroyed. So here, I'm really close to Riftmaker, so I'm just trying to find farm wherever I can to get myself some farm and try to get myself the Riftmaker. I really want to reach full build, uh, of course, to get the W Evolve, and just, you know, just because it feels good to reach full build, basically. So here, I'm just going to take enemy Raptors as well. Here I, I suspect someone's there but end up nobody is actually there. Here Darius does get the push in onto the top lane. Uh, everybody is here to back him up. And really easy kill onto the tower there. We do have the Baron buff so a lot of pushing potential. Triple cannon minions, Ari Charm goes wide again. And really nothing too much is happening so I uh, decide to reset for Rift Maker before the Elder Dragon fight. So here I get the Rift Maker and I do get the Evolve and here I'm gonna run um, back to my team. So here, Graves actually gets caught by the Lee Sin, kicked in by the Lee Sin, and yeah, my, uh, basically a small fight starts breaking out. Lee Sin goes in again. Here I int by actually hitting the Blast Plant the wrong way, so I'm gonna have to walk a long loop instead of just walking straight. I was trying to Blast Plant myself closer to my team, but I end up Blast Planting myself the wrong way. Uh, either way doesn't really matter because it turns out my team is winning the fight without me anyways, so not too important uh, there. So here, uh, Ezreal is left on 1 HP. I'm going to try to snipe him out with the W. Boom. And yeah, I do hit him right as he's about to reach the base. So really nice snipe by me. Sometimes it feels really good to hit the snipe on Kai'Sa as well. And yeah, so here we have the end of the game. So here I'm trying to just get, get kill on Ari before the game ends. I'm tanking the Nexus, so I'm going to Stasis to drop the aggro. Echo ends up going in and actually just dying. Here I, I take the tower aggro and get charmed by Ari. So I decide not to mess about anymore and just go for the auto on the Nexus to just end the game. I uh, can't quite finish off the Ari there. Anyways, uh, we do get uh, the win successfully. And yeah, that'll pretty much be the end of it. So, um, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I'll leave you guys with the stats as usual and goodbye.